Now I know what's going on. Now I can steer the ship effectively because I've been brought up to speed and I know what's happening. Do tell. What's happening is you are about to be engulfed in greatness. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this television program called Supernatural has been on the air for nigh on 13 years and never, never, never had they had an idea as good as they had last year when they decided to put these women together and create a spin-off and give them their own show. So put your hands together for wayward rock stars, Kim Rose and Brianna I saw you. I saw you. I warned you. I said, yeah. Jason, you leave this here at your own. I saw your eyes light. Oh, okay. They're okay. going to come out of here. I said, they're going to smash it. Where does a hat? Do something unsavory yeah. to it. And That's very true. That was my next option. Send it on its very way. Destroy it or make sweet, sweet love to it. <laughs> Isn't that the same thing? <laughs> can, we, can, we borrow, can we borrow the band for my mission? Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Here's, the, here's the deal. Um, my husband, who is the best human being on the planet, is having his birthday today. Oh. I'm not there. Because I'm an asshole. No. I'm earning money, but I would love it if we could all sing him happy birthday. His name is Travis. Travis. All right, we got it. Brianna, you want to take the guitar? Yeah, you got a note. Hey, Billy, give him a note. You're Billy, give Carol a note. Here we are. Ready? Okay. Mm -hmm. Ready? Ready? Or destroy it. Ladies and gentlemen, Brianna Kim! Back away from the guitar, Buckmaster. Stop, stop, stop. Smash! Smash, smash! Bye, boys. Hello, everyone! Oh, we're together again in the airplane hangar. Um, do you guys remember last year when Kim and I hosted? Here. Well, the first thing we remember is how we flashed everybody from up there. <laughs> we'll try to reenact that at some point. We we're trying to decide whose panel we wanted to disrupt the most. Um, and uh, the second thing we remembered is how fucking loud karaoke gets tonight. Who's coming? <laughs> yeah. Right answer. So you know it's going to be loud, right? Am I right? Yeah. Um, should we dive right in? Can yeah, let's dive in. Let's dive in. there. Is it working? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Juan, can you adopt me? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, no problem. I, I feel like you legally can. I'm 23, but it can still happen, right? I do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> family is as family does. Okay, so the real question is, wayward sisters, okay, because I thought it was daughters, and it's whatever, we don't care. Uh, wayward sisters, what can you tell us that you haven't told us already about it? Without getting to... fired? Yeah. I don't want you to get fired. Uh, I want spoilers. What, like, what more can you tell us? Because we're really excited about this show. We're excited too. Yeah, man. We're super excited. We're beyond excited. We're actually actively working on it now, which is getting us more excited. Uh, I'm going to start shooting. That's what I mean. Yes, very excited. But I meant, I didn't mean shooting. I meant uh, training. Um, what haven't we said about it? What do you know? Yeah, exactly. See, right? Okay. Who's on the spot now? Ah, you can't go. put me on the spot like that. I'm not on the panel. I'm just what asking a question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that's in our contract, doesn't yeah. it? Oh. Okay, shoot. What well, we can tell you, there 
are Kim Rose, Brianna Buckmaster, two of the series regulars. There is also, who we know and love, Catherine Newton. <laughs> Catherine Ramdeen. <laughs> a new character played by an actress who you guys are gonna who you guys are gonna love. <laughs> Try not to swear. Uh, Clara Bacco. Yeah, she's dope. Yeah, yeah, she's she just awesome. works with her. Uh, and then even another character who uh, we have not yet met yet. Yeah. We have not yet met yet. Yeah, 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 yeah not yet. Yeah. So that's a total of six, count them, six female series regulars. <laughs> Which we're pretty stoked about. And I have it on good authority there will be some monsters. Correct. <laughs> stuff to do. We aren't just going to sit around braiding each other's hair. It's okay. Um, uh, Kim, Kim just finished shooting an episode in Vancouver uh, to introduce uh, Clark's character. I mean, do lots of other badass things, but also to introduce that character. Um, uh, we've been fight, I've been fight training. Kim's been doing ammunition training, um, oh, which is awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. I learned how to... Uh, Actually choke someone and not choke someone. <laughs> They're like, this is how you actually do it. Don't do that on set. <laughs> yeah, which is an important tool for an actor. <laughs> Don't kill your co-star. Um, what else can we tell you? It's not written yet, so we don't really know what happens, but we kind of know what happens. I'm looking at Kim because Kim actually knows things that she's not allowed to say, so she's leaving it to me because I know less. I think, um, I think in general, Supernatural has created such an amazing family around the concept of family. Um, literal, blood family, and family don't end with blood. I think uh, Wayward is going to explore what happens when family never starts with blood and instead starts with the heart. So, from what I understand, um, its very existence is because of you and an homage to yeah. you. Based on SBN family. So, yeah. You are... That's cool. I never thought about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, um, it is truly uh, intended as a gift, and you're going to see some things that you've asked for that you never thought you would see. Um, you will probably also not see some things that you've asked for. Give us time. Have get, it, get it on the air, because we got loud voices and we're not afraid to use them. So, that's all the a couple of very opinionated broads of a certain age who don't take no shit anymore. You know, so. Yeah, and uh, so keep making noise. That's our only request to you, yep. is keep making noise. Hashtag wayward. Hashtag At wayward. CW. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all that good Thank stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo. Hello. Hi. Uh, so my question is for Kim. I saw. Gonna answer anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I saw on like YouTube clips that your daughter has autism. My brother is autistic, and so I was wondering if you have any like funny stories and things she said, because I know my brother says a lot of funny stuff. Hmm. That's, a, that's an interesting question, because one of the things I get from the autistic community is to remember that autism actually isn't about me. As much as I feel involved and invested, um, I am reminded constantly I don't have the right to speak on behalf of my kid. And I try very hard to include her. When I do post things and when I share videos, uh, it's always because she has said, yes, it's okay, or sometimes, quite frankly, because she said, the people are sad, mommy, give them this. <laughs> she did that after the finale. I was like, I was scrolling through and I was like, oh, ooh, oh, she goes, what's wrong? I said, well, Supernatural did some stuff and made, made the people sad. She goes, my peoples? I said, well, some of them are your peoples, yes. She said, do I have fans? I said, I think you might possibly. She goes, hang on. She goes into her other room. She gets a pair of goggles that light up. She's got all of these, like, rave kid toys that are brilliant and will serve her well if she ever becomes a rave party kid. And uh, she puts them on, turns them on, puts them up on her head and goes, take a picture of this. <laughs> Give that to the peoples. It will make them happy. So, so, so she is, uh, yeah. 
she is a generous, literal human being. Um, I will tell you one thing that I am amused by. Autistic or not, you just have some kids tell the truth at all times. And um, I remember one time asking her after she left the house if um, if she was going to come back and visit me. And she said, when I grow up, I will leave. And I said, yes, will you come back and visit me? And she goes, no, mommy. I said, why not? She goes, because you're an idiot. <laughs> I had to argue with that. I couldn't. You're like, but not wrong. I have this spreadsheet to do. The, the, uh, one of my favorite uh, things uh, when I go to visit Kim was um, Kim and Tabby took me to the Grove once, my favorite stories, because it's just the epitome of who she is as a little girl. She's like, we went to, we we're waiting for the elevator to come and these two women, you know, middle-aged women minding their own business, walked up to the elevator where we were standing and Tabby just went, well, hello girls. She was wearing an Elsa dress. She goes, you like my dress? <laughs> and they were laughing so hard. And I was just like, oh, she's just such a sparkly little girl. She can't help but share herself with the world. And that's what I love about her. It's awesome. It's awesome. I hope you're enjoying your brother. And I hope he knows how lucky he is to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so, hey. um, so I forgot to ask you last night. But, so my mom like travels for work now and I don't like see her a lot. And she's actually here with me now for this. She's in the hotel room. Um, I was wondering if you had any like mom advice for my senior year because I don't really have her this year. Oh, yeah. call as much as you need to. No shame in needing to go home, <laughs> ever. Whatever home means. If your heart needs a little dose of home, no shame. Secondly, anything that you are that you think you should ask your mom about but you're too afraid to because you know she'll say no, yeah. don't fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> I totally thought you were going to say the opposite. It's so funny, there's like Kim the anarchist and Kim the mom. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think senior year. I, my mom was so awesome. I was bullied a lot in high school, but I was also class president. So I was like setting myself up, you know, for people to throw tomatoes at me. So my mom knew that I was strong-willed from the get-go and she, whenever I would come home upset about being bullied or maybe that a, a boy that I liked didn't like me back, she would always just be like, just wait. Just you wait. Because when you're young, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this, you are in this bubble of reality, which is all you know of let's say 18 years, and that is the truth that you know, so you don't know beyond that. So when people go, oh man, it's such a cliche, but when people say it gets better, it can, and it does. So just wait and really have faith that if it's not going good in the moment, it's gonna get better. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Good luck. Yeah, you guess right. Brianna, <laughs> um, you can put your in and put two. You're so but, uh, disappointed in that. I'm going to. Go ahead. Um, Kim, when I was in New Jersey, uh, someone asked about um, advice for autism for her daughter. I used to work, well, I do work with developmental disabilities, and I was wondering if you had any funny stories that you wanted to swap with me because I have a really funny story. Tell me a story. Okay, so I worked with a gentleman. Um, I know I'm no longer with the company, but he loved Anna and Elsa. So after he had, had had dinner, he would come and talk to me about how Anna and Elsa is for Bill, and I was like, okay. Um, so this would go on every day, like routine. And so finally, I'm like, all right, I'm entertaining your, your want for Anna and Elsa, but what about me? Who do I get? So he goes, um, um, I don't know. And I said, what about Jensen and Jared? And he goes, yes. <laughs> so then I was like, okay, so Bill gets Anna and Elsa. And, and then he goes, Stephanie gets Jensen and Jairus. Close enough. Close enough. Just kidding. And I was like, okay, but it's Jensen and Jared. So from that day forward, it was 
Bill, Anna Elsa, Stephanie, Jensen, and Jared. That's fair. Oh, that is totally fair. <laughs> um, my daughter recently uh, had a crush on a YouTuber called The Fitness Marshal. Is anyone familiar <laughs> with this guy? Okay, so I could not <laughs> dissuade this crush and did not want to. He's amazing. He does, he dances. And there are dances that a trained dancer, such as my husband, enjoys doing, and someone who is not a trained dancer, such as my daughter, enjoys watching and trying to do. She was so involved with him, and it was all we were watching, and watching and watching, she knew all the moves, and, uh, um, and uh, he, he just was charming and endearing, and one day she goes, I think we should have the fitness marshal over for dinner. <laughs> and I was like, honey, the world doesn't work this way. Unfortunately for her, it does work this way. Um, so. And she kept insisting, I'm like, honey, he lives in Indiana. I don't know what to tell you. She's like, just check. <laughs> so sure enough, I go stalk him on Twitter. He's just moved to Los Angeles. <laughs> and he's just the right age to know the mom from Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. <laughs> manifest things like this. My husband and I then immediately took her to an open house at this gorgeous mansion with a pool in the back and we're like, see honey, if we had enough money we could buy this. Don't you want this too? <laughs> I was just going to say that. I'm like, you need to get her to go and buy a lottery ticket for us yeah, all. Right. Yeah. Not just what, just what, ta what Tabby wants, Tabby gets. Tabby gets. <laughs> Changes that. reality, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Hello. Hello. Hi, Kim. Don't feel like an ass because you're missing your husband's birthday. I should be on my honeymoon right now, and I'm here. Oh. <laughs> Where's your husband? Um, we, we kind of planned the wedding in two months, and I had this trip planned first. <laughs> Is he here? Right. No, no. I left him at home. I'm here with my little sister. Where? I am here with my little sister. Here. Somebody get a picture of this. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> we got her! We win! No, you really did. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, go back. My little sister is too nervous to ask you guys this question. Um, because we're very scary. No, right? She just flipped off her husband. She, they were both really good fans. Um, she has a question. Said you both played badass lady cops. Um, what would your death row meal be? Ooh! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stand up here. Uh, Kim and I love talking about food. Oh man! Death row meal. Mm. Yes. <laughs> well, Wait, both of my guts are saying. Mm. The problem is these are the questions that then my brain kicks in. And this is about now immediately. I was like, oh, you're thinking it. Oh, wait, oh yeah. This is, yeah. This is what Kim does. I'd be re way too upset to eat. <laughs> like, is it injection or gas? <laughs> am I going to? Am I going to die before I vomit it back up from the way that they're killing me? Am I eating? Like, yeah. What city am I? In? Where am I incarcerated? Because the food might be bad. I guess I wouldn't have to worry about food poisoning. Where did you commit the capital murder? Where did I commit the? I know. Okay, my answer would be spaghetti with meatballs. Um, for sure, I'd want like a milkshake to down that bitch. Um, and for dessert, what's my favorite dessert? I already have a milkshake, so I don't want to have ice cream. I think like creme brulee. Okay, and then probably an espresso. And then like an, I'd, I'd make it as long as possible. <laughs> an after dinner cocktail, you know. That I'd meet somebody nice. And I'm just gonna... <laughs> Yeah, one flavor of every dim sum dumpling ever that has existed. Just one. And I'll work my way. From China. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you. <laughs> thanks, babe. And thanks, little sis. And thank you, husband. <laughs> New husband. New husband. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Sebastian, and you've probably gotten like questions and like stories about this before. But representation in media, and like film and television, and all that kind of stuff is really important to me as a trans person. Like seeing somebody that reflects like who I am, I can like be more comfortable with being myself. And like, or seeing like characters support trans characters or support gay characters. Uh, I was wondering if there was any like strong female characters that you grew up with 
because like your characters are strong characters that I'm growing up with, and like I don't have any like trans characters that I like look up to because yes. it really isn't. That's yeah. my promise, but that's my voice and my intention. I, I yeah. was wondering if you like could maybe think of a strong um, female character that you grew up with as a kid or as a teenager. Oh, Linda Carter is Wonder Woman. <laughs> Of Wonder Woman. It's my favorite scene in that movie is when they're like, nothing can be done, and she like whips off her cape oh and she's like, I did not grow up that way. Or something, I don't know what she said, I don't know the quote, but she was just like, says you. And I was like, you go, girl! <laughs> oh, I love it, I'm thinking about it. Um, for me, my the woman that I looked up to growing up was Roseanne Barr. Yeah. I grew up on that show, Roseanne, uh, partly because I think my mom really related to her. I grew up in a very blue-collar family. My mom was the one who worked. She didn't make much money. There was three kids. We were just dirty, poor kids. And my mom loved the show, and she loved watching Roseanne, um, a brilliant actress and comedian, a, a struggle as her character, and um, I, I loved watching my mom relate to her, and what an exciting thing to maybe be in that position one day, um, and what an incredible thing to see women that you can relate to, and watching how that really helped my mom is something that I now get to aspire to. Also, I'd just like to say thank you, like, having your support, like, I don't get that support at home at all, so, but, like, having your guys' support as a trans person means the entire world, and, like, I know that I have, like, the SPN family behind me, so thank you very much. <laughs>
you are really naked, you know, uh, and and you're putting yourself out there. And when you do screw up, it, it does make you feel like you <laughs> failed that much harder. But luckily, we we as a giant family and community, we all have each other's back. We want to see each other succeed, and nobody's judging anybody for failing. Um, or if they are, they're welcome to it. Yeah. Go ahead. It's okay. No way to grow. It's the only way to grow. Somebody posted recently a quote that Jensen has that says, there, you are not failing. You are succeeding or you are learning. Yeah. Oh, Jensen. Right? <laughs> that guy, you know, you know, he just sucked for one second. Yeah. He's so, he's so smart. If only he were talented. Or cute. Well, oh, that <laughs> Jensen. Poor guy. One day. Yeah. One day he'll get his. But I think he, I think he phrased it beautifully. Don't, don't define yourself by the moment. Def the win is in trying. Right? Yeah. Unless you don't want to. Then fuck up. Don't Damn do it. it. <laughs> Fail upward, I say. Thank, thank, thank you. Hey. I'm coming to you. I saw that terrified I'm, look in your eye. I'm shaking a lot. Here this I whole come. trip, I've said like 30 times I have to pee. You have to pee? <laughs> this is my first time. Nervous bladder is a thing. I have to pee all the time. Do you know the first thing I do? Fun fact, everyone. First thing I do when I get to a convention center at every weekend is go, where's the bathrooms? <laughs> because I make myself drink so much freaking water that I have to pee all the time. You hear that, Victoria? She's got Okay, okay, go ahead. So I'll start with my question for Brianna because it's you because my first question was actually for Kim and then you start getting all sassy with other people. Yeah, I'll get real sassy on y'all. I want questions, like, god damn it. I'm just kidding. I'm scared you'll fight me. <laughs> okay, so um, my one question is in the one episode they asked you your line was that your husband Doug left you because you like cook do you actually like cookie dough milkshakes? I don't think I've ever had one. What? Yeah. You know, autographs are in a couple hours, guys. <laughs> there isn't just something in my eye. <laughs> Brianna Buckmaster, yeah. putting the B in subtle. It is. <laughs> T-shirt! Uh, also, can I hear you do the Donna voice? Oh, yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Fun bar trick. You guys are such suckers for that accent. I love it. It's like you'll never hate me now as long as I pull out that Donna voice. Um, it is very rare that I will turn down food. Okay? <laughs> food lover, right here. Not a shame. Okay? It's the reason I don't live in Hollywood. <laughs> okay, and then my question for Kim is do you prefer playing Jody Mills or did you like playing Carrie on the Sweet Life as I can go to? <laughs> I prefer Jody. Okay. Right. Because Carrie was all about, um, I mean, it was a lovely, I have, you guys have really helped me heal a lot of my resentments towards that experience. But uh, Carrie was, Carrie's entire existence was about not following through on her impulses to kill. <laughs> and Jody gets to indulge those impulses every once in a while. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go pee. <laughs> so, Hi. Uh, my question's for Kim. I'm sorry for you. <laughs> no, you're not. You know why? Because I'm going to answer I love you. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm going to answer it before Kim answers it. Okay. Wait, unless it's a really serious one, then I'll feel bad. It's not serious, but you can't really relate. Um, do you... <laughs> what did she say? No, I just heard it's not serious. You're in trouble, whatever you said. <laughs> Kim, do you agree that like short-haired girls already have a connection even if they don't know each other? Yeah. Oh, the short-haired girl. Yeah. 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 We and it's it's really cool too because I will um I'll occasionally see somebody who's got a hairstyle that I aspire to that's like short and just like rocking everything. And the best thing in the world is when sister spots me and is like, nice hair. And I'm like, I was loving yours too. Yeah. It is, it's a, it's weird, but I'm going to say it's a ballsy thing to cut your hair off. Like, there are people in this world that think I am taking an active, aggressive stance towards the male half of mankind by having short hair. And I'm like, no, I just don't like to wash it, and it looks bad when it's long. 
sorry, it's not a militant statement, I just think I'm cuter this way. I didn't know you before, but I do think you're pretty cute. I can't imagine you with long hair. It, it, it just was, so suits you. I don't have good long hair either. Like, right. it's just not good. I tried. I tried really hard. I've had short hair, and I'm not like it with short hair. Even if it's like to this length, it just I just look like a someone playing a mom on television. Not even an actual mom, but just like someone playing a mom. Do you know who I, how I can relate? Curly haired girls. Yes. Because you know why? My hair was a lot curlier before I had a baby, and I remember I, I would have a very specific stylist that knew how to style curly hair, and I would like walk around, and people would be like. Who does your hair? Like everybody's looking for the perfect curly hair stylist. So I know gentlemen in here are enjoying this conversation. <laughs> well, no, some of them are relieved to find out I don't hate them. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You're also one of the reasons why I cut all my hair off. Do you like it? Yes, yeah, I do. It suits you. Thank you. Yeah. Exactly right. right. It, it's not like I have an inherent preference for girls who cut their hair short, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but like, <laughs> I, I, right? But I love seeing somebody who's like, I hear your rules and I defy them. That's <laughs> 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 why my hair's gray. I did the same thing. I went through a whole rash of different colors and I was like, what is the most rip? Rebellious fuck you I can give to Hollywood right now. Oh, gray hair. <laughs> Mine is wearing a crop top. I'm like, I know you don't want to see my belly fat, but it's right here. <laughs> Suck it, Hollywood. Okay, Slash, thanks for the job. <laughs> but we really love you. Please keep employing us. Hi, um, I'm Chelsea. I just want to say a special thanks to Kim, because you were like a second to mom to me and my brother when we were growing up, and he actually just texted me like half hour ago telling me he ships out January 8th. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. So, but um, my question was, what was the most physically challenging, challenging scene for you guys to film? Physically challenging? Yes. Oh, I, ha I had um, the, when, when the smart thing to do uh, when a pack of vampires are coming for you, is to uh, take the child they're after and go to a cabin in the woods! <laughs> it's dark, there isn't anywhere to hide, uh, the walls are made of uh, flimsy wood. Yeah, it seems like the right answer. Yeah, that was, that was, I know what we'll do. Jody, uh, Jody, Jody. But, um, and then they took her, surprise, surprise, uh, and I had to go running through. It was raining that night, and we were out in the middle of um, this place with a with a, a paint gun, paintball, like, paintball, paintball, uh, paintball, wherever the frick you play paintball in the middle of the woods <laughs> with a cat out there. We're cool guys, I yeah. swear. We're super cool. I'm I've been sober for three years and I'm still drunk. Um, <laughs> and uh, and there was no kidding, four inches of mud. And I had to run at top speed through the mud and get clotheslined, which they rigged up. So here's how they did it. They put me in this harness, and then they took a uh, metal cable and attached it to the ground and screwed it in the ground. And so what I was supposed to do is run as fast as I could until I reached the end of it, and it went boom, boom, pull me back, and hopefully at the same time as the guy stuck his arm out so it looked like he did it at 2 o'clock in the morning <laughs> in four inches of mud. <laughs> it was so much fun! <laughs> I was like, I'll do it again! I'll do it. it was like Mike Myers in that, in that, uh, do you guys remember the Saturday where they would lash him to the, oh, to the right, right, right. jungle gym and he just kept like, yeah, I yeah. got it, I got it, I can do it again, I can, ugh, all right, I'll do it again, I'll do it again. Oh my God, it was insane, it was so hard, but I'm so fulfilled by these things that are hard. And, um, and yet still turn out to look really cool. So satisfying. Uh, my most physically demanding scene was the donut scene. <laughs> uh, have you ever tried to eat a donut for four hours? 
and I don't mean one donut. Um, and the joke we always say is, uh, at, at the end of each take, I, at first they were like, are you gonna be okay eating these donuts? And I was pregnant at the time, so I was like, hell yeah, bring it on! And by the sixth take, I was like, okay, I ca I'm calling time out. Um, and then so we started spitting them into a bucket. Jensen would also be spitting into a bucket, and he would always like grab the bucket and go, ladies first. <laughs> if that's not romance, everyone. Um, yeah, I haven't done any uh, crazy fight things yet. Uh, I did have a strange challenge trying to hack that vampire's head off, though, because it was a uh, FX, and so they really need you to like swing the machete at a very specific point, which I am definitely am not great at, so that took a while. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I need that short. <laughs> a little bit on the short side. All good. We got you, girl. Hi. Um, I'm a mom of a 16-year-old boy and a 7-year-old little girl. When my son was younger and now as my daughter is um, little, um, we, I've been singing lullabies and I was wondering what your favorite ones for your kids. Aww. You go. Um, Valentina does this thing where she always says mama's song. And what that means is whatever song I was currently singing in the car for long periods of time, which often were the songs I was doing for s, &S. So Mama's song was always Valerie or, you know, stop dragging my heart around, now it's a million reasons. But uh, I started, since she was a baby, I sang her uh, Hush Little Baby. And she's three now, and that seems to be the one that she's requesting the most, which she wants me to sing. And I find that very endearing. Out of all the songs, she still loves the one I sang to when she was a baby, so. Yeah, it's totally universal. My daughter bursts into tears like I have killed her dog <laughs> when I sing lullabies to her. <laughs> like, when I am at my wit's end, I threaten to sing her a lullaby. <laughs> Like, I can't, you need to, I need a time out, mommy's gotta go and I go, no, mommy, no, no, he's gonna, I will sing you a lullaby. No lullabies! I'm so sorry, mommy. I don't, I don't know what it is, but she has a passionate, deep, visceral aversion to me sing, singing lullabies to her. Specifically lullabies. Specifically yeah. lullabies. Russell yeah. singing's not yeah. No, she's okay she's if we're singing, it. if we're, you know, jamming a loud and swearing, she's down with that. She'll occasionally let me have them, she'll be like, you can sing this first, mommy. But uh, no lullabies. No. <laughs> Who knows? Good no. question, though. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I always thought Rock by Baby was creepy anyway. <laughs> Like, in the treetop, when the bow breaks, the cradle will fall and down will come, baby. Talking about, I mean, I know it's about baby birds, but even that's sad. It is sad. Like, that's sad. This will put you to sleep, little child. Yeah. When you fall asleep, you'll fall to death. Hi. Hi. There's a message on the screen here for some people. Did everybody take note of that? Tremendous. Got a registration. Hi. You're in trouble. Hi, I have a question for Kim. Um, I wanted to know when Did you, you were... Did you see my reaction? I was like, go ahead. <laughs> when you were on Sweet Life with Zach and Cody, you played Zach and Cody's mom character, and they got into all sorts of trouble. So I wanted to know if Dylan and Cole ever got into trouble on set and played any pranks on you. Does that count as a prank question? People should drink over that, right? Drink! Yeah, drink. That counts. That counts. Come on. It's, it's the mini Sam and Dean. Mini Jared and Jensen. Jared and Jensen, it. 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 Um, no, they were remarkably well behaved. Like, the worst that ever happened is that they would purposely eat cauliflower and beans and then get in an elevator with me. That's literally what I was going to say. I'm like, I know the answer to that. It has to do with farting. Yeah, they were, I wish I had fun, wacky stories about their mayhem and hijinks, but all of those kids were on point. Four point students, dead on with the lines, like stuck up for me when I wasn't able to stick up for myself, 
amazing. Like Dylan actually at one point wouldn't say a line in the script because it was because I was pregnant at this point, and the line was making fun of mom's weight, and he just kept not saying. He's, he's voiced his displeasure at the line, and they didn't cut it, and he wouldn't say it. And we get down to we're actually taping in front of a live studio audience, and somebody's like, Dylan, say the line. He said, I would never say that to any human being, let alone my mom. Fire me. <laughs> Um, used to play a fun because it's multi-camera so they're shooting all the time right so um, it's possible to get in the way of other people and I'm taller than they are so I would be standing in front of them and I'd be in their light so I'd have to shift my weight so they were still in the light and Dylan would then shift his weight so that he was in the shadow again and then I'd shift my weight and I always got in trouble <laughs> Kim Kim stop you're blocking him I'm like I'm trying not to <laughs> <laughs> they're good guys. I'm glad they're doing so well. Thank you. Thank you. Boys. Oh, boys. Hi. Hi. Brianna, thank you for the hair advice last year you gave me about the curly hair. Hey, you got it. My name is Brittany, and I wanted to share two things. My, um, I'm having a wayward weekend. It is my birthday on Sunday, and I am single for the first time in 17 years. My husband of 10 years and I just split up. Oh, wow. Are we in trouble for that specifically? Would you, would you high five her or would you punish her? What would you guys do? Oh. She, and she totally knew what it meant too. I have experience with that. Yeah, what would you do in that situation? I, I, I punished her, I took away her video games for a week and she wrote him an apology letter. I mean, do you think that was a good? Yeah, yeah we've written, Tabby and I have written many an apology okay. letter. Okay. And, it, <laughs> and it generally consists of what did you do? How did it make the other person feel? Okay, that's what I did. This is our first what situation. What are you going to very do? Good kid. This is our yeah. First what are you, What are you going to do instead? Like, what's what's? I what couldn't help but leave the room and laugh when she told me what happened. I kind of had to picture, picturing my little seven year old flicking somebody off. I, I, and then I had to call her dad and tell her tell him what happened. And he said I I laughed. And she's <laughs> seven. So here's my thing with swearing in my little one because I swear a lot. See, I don't use I the F word in front of her. That's one thing I don't do. What's that? But I don't use the F word okay. in front of her. That's one I, word I don't. But she told me it's like she likes the middle finger finger emoji thing. She thinks it's funny. It is funny. So, I know. <laughs> that's the thing. I think it's funny too. That's the problem. Is my that's point is that I um, I'm 33. I think it's hilarious. okay. Hold on a second. Listen, here's the thing with swearing. In my, this is my belief. You can take it or leave it. This is how I choose to raise my daughter. Um, you can swear. Swear words are words. They, for me, I find them empowering. If you, you choose to find them empowering, let them. Um, I don't, I would not like it if my daughter swore at somebody because they might not share those views. If she's at home and she wants to say, well, shit, she can, because you know why? I'm not worried about raising a lady, I'm worried about raising a woman. Well, my, my older daughter told me a story once when she was three about how she had a dream and she heard her finger in her dream and she said, damn it. And I said, well, Abby, that's not nice to say. And she goes, well, I didn't say it, Mama. It was in my dream. <laughs> so, I mean, my kids are pretty... <laughs> They're pretty intelligent with that. Yeah, it's tricky. And so I, I think, think it's like, I can give you my advice, but it's um, it's to each their own, man. Yeah. We all are raising little ones the best that we feel is possible. So I can tell you what I would do, but ultimately that's totally your decision. Yeah, well, I want to thank you ladies for being strong female figures for me and my daughters. Thank you. Thank you, for thank you very much. much. Have and we're the thinking of you this best weekend. weekend. Have an amazing ever. weekend. We're having a party in our hotel room. Yeah, you are. Yeah, get it. Hi. Hi. Oh, I'm Katie. Hi, Katie. <laughs> now I'm really nervous that I'm actually talking to you. Getting closer to you? A little closer. <laughs> and closer. <laughs> Just pretend I slid down that. And closer. <laughs> and closer. <laughs> What's your question? <laughs> now I'm really uncomfortable. Kelly, yeah, I know. I get it. Because... <laughs> I, it's for Kim. <laughs> I should have stayed down there. Oh, what a brilliant setup. I love when that happens. Oh. So, I'm Seth 
the pajama party last night and you were talking about knowing how to write English and I was kind of curious why? Because I wrote, oh. wrote hmm. You're very <laughs> Yes, I've done dressage for many years. Hey. So good on ya. Um, why do I why do I ride horses or why did I pick English? Okay, I've been riding for two years. The short version is about three years ago I uh, had the brilliant awareness that I'm actually insane. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't just my imagination. I'm crazy. And uh, that crazy, if it's not aimed properly, spits out all over people I love and things that I like and breaks them. So I got the advice, aim your crazy. And so after a lifetime of, I'm not competitive, I'm not an adrenaline junkie, I'm content just to sit here. No, I actually need to try to kill myself on a the average of three times a week. And so I started riding horses. I chose English because the person that is my instructor happens to teach English. And now I lease a horse and I jump over itty bitty little things and I ride bareback every once in a while and I hurt myself a I lot. Get videos. It's pretty she cool. gets videos and um, and every single time I think I'm going to die and that's a fulfilling thing. But yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Brianna also I yeah. think you can talk about aiming your crazy. Oh yeah. I am my crazy at a large punching bag. <laughs> I choose to uh, uh, release the demons, as you will, through hitting things hard and fast. Fast if I can handle it. But about a year and a half ago, I started boxing, and um, it is oh so satisfying. I highly recommend it for anybody who wants to get out any aggression. And you don't sweat a lot, uh, and work off the milkshakes, spaghetti meatballs, and creme brulee that I'm going to eat later in life. Because God knows I'm going to be incarcerated. <laughs> oh, hello. Hi. Okay, so first I just want to say that I love you all very much because you're such strong, empowering, beautiful women. And you've helped so many people. And I actually wanted to know how you came up with the idea of like the Wayward Daughters Foundation. Oh, that's awesome. We didn't. We didn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, not... Not one iota of wayward it was come up between either of these brands. We support it, and we're proud of it, and we encourage it, but the actual ideas were made by two people. One of them, Riley Kirshner. Yeah, you can give a shout out to that girl. And um, she came up with wayward daughters, literally. We, to the point of, we asked her to trademark it. Because we're like, this is very, a long time ago, way, like a year and a half ago, probably. We're like, we want, this is yours, we want you to be protected, you should trademark it. Um, and uh, she asked us, she was like, is it okay if I do this? And we're like, yeah, is it okay if we jump on your bandwagon? <laughs> um, and then it kind of went from there, and then, you can talk about Wayward AF. Oh, yeah, that was, again, they were like, let's, we, we originally, for the first t-shirt campaign, were doing much more of my realm, which is like, wayward is home, wayward, like holding wayward, hands. Hold, you know, women holding hands, and finally, and supporting each other, and being what we've really gotten out of this community, and, um, and, and the woman who was running the merchandise was like, you know, Riley and I were drinking last night, we just want to float an idea past you. What about Wayward AF? And I was like, would they go for it? She's like, I'm the one you have to ask. Kim was like, uh, I don't know if the man would go for that. And Stans was like, I am the man. <laughs> We're like, oh, then yes, sure. And, and I think that was that last bit of what I love so much about it is, is yes, we are perfect as we are. And we support each other and we, and we heal each other and we break each other and we heal each other again and, and the, the emotional support. But what was missing was the defiance. Yeah. Was that no of and fuck you. I say that with love. But, but for some reason the idea that it takes defiance to support each other and it takes defiance for me to say, I am good and perfect and worthy and that doesn't mean I'm not going to keep growing and it doesn't mean that I don't deserve to be humble because I need to stay humble if I'm going to keep growing. But the concept of as fuck is <laughs> not meant to be offensive, it's meant to be liberating. 
just own it. And if you and if cussing doesn't liberate you and it makes you uncomfortable, then don't do it. Then don't fucking cuss. <laughs> like the whole point was just to flip it into that last phase of Oh yeah, we got this. We are not going to apologize for who we are. I will apologize for what I've done if I have hurt you. I will no longer apologize for who I am. I think that's that very, was the very inspirational. Thank you. Yeah, the whole, especially Wayward AF, that it just evolved into this unbelievable, beautifully flawed monster that continues to grow. I'm such, it is an honor to be a proud of it, and it makes me a better person by watching you and having you guys encourage me to be the most me that I can be. And that's what AF really is, as fuck as like, as, as humanly possible. So I am as flawed as humanly possible, and I celebrate that with you. Yes. Four minutes. What a load of shit. Hi. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. Hi. Uh, sorry, this is my first commission. Uh, yay! yay! <laughs> the Supernatural fandom, the movie, when it was still on Comic-Con HQ, because I'm a huge Kings of Con fan, but, uh, and I also read the, the biography, but I was wondering, how was your experience uh, recording that? I guess specifically, Kim, but you guys mean a lot to me. Oh, I'll tell you. Um, uh, I did it twice. The first time I went with my daughter, because I thought it would be really sweet to include her, and she didn't do anything I wanted her to do, and I got very frustrated. I got frustrated and I was not proud of who I was as a person or who I was as a mother. Um, I, 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 I let my expectations of what should have been dampen who she was and what I had to offer. So we left and on the way home I called crying and I said, can I come back and do that again? I put my daughter in a situation she shouldn't have been in. I asked something of her that I asked of her instead of asking her and it was wrong of me. And he said, yeah, come back and do it again. So I think when I came back, I was already very raw. And um, I was just so grateful to have found my voice and to have learned that important lesson as a mom of like, she's not a, a dancing monkey. She's not, just because I think would be a fun, endearing idea, she's not an accessory. She's a person. And if she doesn't have the capacity to understand what I'm asking of her, how could she possibly succeed in it? So um, it was very important, and I don't think a lot of people know the gift that doing that gave me. Um, it changed how I mother her completely. Thank you. Thank because you. I'm also autistic, and the way you support your daughter is really inspiring. <laughs> Thank you. Agreed. Hello. Hey guys. Um, so I'm here with my cousin Brian. Um, our first con was NashCon last year in February. Um, <laughs> it feels like so long ago. I know. Okay, go ahead. So, um, we absolutely love you guys. We look up to you guys a lot. And um, we love coming to the conventions, but they happen to also come with a lot of tragedy for our family. Um, we've lost people very close to us, um, very close family members, both conventions at NashCon while we were there and while we're here in Pittsburgh. And I didn't know if you guys had any advice or certain coping mechanisms that you guys take in hard times. Uh, to hold your loved ones even tighter. I can't imagine what you're going through, I really can't. I haven't lost someone, knock on wood, really close to me in a long time. But even hearing your story reminds me that I really need to do that. Hold, hold on to them tight, you never know, right? I have lost a lot of loved ones um, in varying levels of humorous tragedy. <laughs> um, pain is not an indication that you're doing anything wrong, and it will pass. The best thing you can do is be gentle to yourself. Be ge the best thing I did was treat myself kindly. My alternative was not hurting when somebody I love dies. And that means that I wouldn't love them. So the pain will graduate to loss, which will then graduate to sweetness. It's always gonna hurt. Mine always hurts. 
but that's kind of the price we pay to love, and the brave ones of us choose to keep loving anyway. So I applaud you in that, and I support you in that. Find the love. Thank you. Give to yourself in this. Thank you. Thank you. First off, I just want to say thank you for your persist, persist what you wrote for that. I've always been told that I'm loud your poster. Oh, oh God. Um, I've oh. grown up with everybody telling me to quiet down and not be so loud, so I felt that at a really deep level. <laughs> um, and also, did you know Wayward was going to blow up like it has and become this huge thing? I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the classic. No. <laughs> No, this will never be it. No. Yes. I know, yin and yang right here. Yeah. We had no idea. I'm constantly stunned, shocked, and amazed. And so grateful. I just, every single thing that it gives you comes back to us a gazillion fold. So, no matter what the future brings for it, this is amazing. And I thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's a good segue because, as we talked about when I was introducing you ladies, we get segues. They're you get your own segue. You're tired of walking. It's a long walk. It's a very long walk. They have their own spinoff, as you know. We're very excited about that. And the thing that makes this spinoff super unique is that it involves you heavily, because the way pilots work, the way new shows are developed, typically those pilots are shot. And then in some boardroom in some faraway land, people in neckties decide what you get to watch. This is not that. These two episodes, which back to back, will formulate the pilot of their show, will be included in the season of Supernatural this year. Which means you will be seeing the pilot for their show. You will get to watch. And you will then get to go on Twitter and social media in all of its forms and create a hailstorm that the network cannot ignore, ergo forcing their hand to pick up the show. Because the show is going to kick ass, it's going to be fabulous, I know everybody involved in the show and it's filled with incredible talent, the idea is fantastic, and the time has come for women to have a show about hunting dangerous things. I'm excited to be a part of it. But the thing I'm most excited about Just is that it. we get to decide if it makes the air. We, yeah. the collective we, we can go online, we can be active, we can start the conversation, we can be pursuing the goal of being sure that this show is not just a pilot, but a series that lasts for years and years and years. So, prepare accordingly. Tell your social groups. Get your people motivated, because you will decide if this thing goes or not, because you will be the ones giving it the thumbs up and getting active and starting the conversation and keeping it alive. It's a rare opportunity, and I'm thrilled that we're finally being able to do something on our own to make sure we get to see what we, what we want to see. And I personally, Richard Spade, want to see these two women on TV every week for the next several years. Ladies and gentlemen, good news, and we're in a Everybody, that was something. This whole day's been fantastic. <laughs>